Hello and welcome to this session. This is part 2 of Postman Crash Course and in this part we are going to learn about collections, variables and environments and I will go very basic step by step and we will learn what are collections, how to create and run and manage collections, we will also see how to share collections, we will then see what are variables, how to create and refer variables, we will also go to the scripting part and then we will set and get variables at different levels and then we will learn how to create use and manage environments so this is going to be very easy and very interesting so let's get started and i will go to my postman and here we have already created some collections earlier and this is the collections tab so in postman collection is a group of requests or we can say it is used to group requests together and then you can do some operations like sharing of those requests editing and different operations you can do on the group of request and if i just go here you can see there is a new button and i can use this to create a new collection also you can create a new collection from this new button drop down and we have a option of collection here you can also go to the collections tab on the sidebar and then we have a option to create a new collection from here when you close all your tabs that are open here you will find a option of launchpad and you can click on this launchpad and then we have a option to create a collection so these are different ways that you can create a collection let me quickly create a new collection from here and i will say this is my new collection you can give any name to your collection and then we have option of description which is optional you can also give some authorization and all the requests under this collection will follow this authorization you can add some pre-request scripts that will run before running the request inside the collection we can have some test script that will run after we have got a response we will learn about scripts in a different session and then we have variables where we can create the variables for this collection so i will just create click on create here and you can see the collection is created here so this is how you can create a collection and now we can also create folders inside this collection so if you click on this three dots you will find an option to add a folder i can click on add folder and now i can create new folders for example i want to store all the get requests inside a folder so i'm naming it as get you can name it anything and then you can create folders as per your requirement for example if you want to store all the requests of a particular service or a product and you want to do categorization you can do that and then again in the folder we have description we have authorization so all the requests under a specific folder can follow the same authorization and you can add it here we have again pre-request scripts section and test section i will say create and now if you expand the collection you can see we have got a folder created here so this is how you can create a collection and then how you can add folders we will also see how we can add requests to our collection now you can directly go to the collection or the folder inside the collection and click on these three dots and you will find an option to add a request and when you click here it will open this window where you can save your request and then you can create the request and it will get added to the collection and to the specific folder if you select here you can also directly create a new request from the new button and then you can save it to a particular collection that you want to or you can directly click on this tab and create a request here and then click on the save button here and then it will again open the save request window where you can select the collection and the folder where you want to save your request now another way is all your executed requests will be available in the history folder here so you can see this is the history folder and you can find all the requests that you executed here now you can go to any of the requests and click on this plus button this is for save request it will again open the window and you can select your collection and folder and then save to the collection just in case you want to store all these requests from some particular day and want to store it in your collection you can click on this plus button from that day from the header and then you can select the collection for example i will say save to my new collection and i will click on save and now if i go to collections you can see here i have got all my requests added to the collection i can also 
store it inside this folder i can just do a drag and drop for example i will drag this get request inside the get folder and now you can see the request is inside the get folder i can again drag and drop this get request and store it inside the get folder and now you can see we have two requests here so this is how you can add requests to your collection uh, then you can also duplicate your collection you can go to these three dots and again you will find an option to duplicate a collection so you can duplicate from here now when you want to run your collection you can just go to your collection click on this arrow and here you will find an option of run it will open a collection runner window and on this collection runner window you will find all your requests that are inside a collection you can also select an environment we will see about environment later and then you can select iterations delay in milliseconds if you are getting any data from a data file like json or csv you can select it from here and then you can say run the collection from here this will execute all the requests inside your collection and you can see the run summary the re you can retry from here you can export the results and all these you can do so for now i will close this and then let us also see how you can share your collection and then manage so if you go to your collection and click on this arrow we have a share button and when you click on the share button we have got this option here so you can select your workspace and then you can share within your workspace so let us say if i create a new workspace i will go to my postman and here we have a workspace drop down i can go here and i will say create new and i will say the name is my new workspace and you can make it a personal workspace or a team workspace if i click create workspace now you can see it is created here uh, let me switch back to my earlier workspace and now i will go to the collection and click on share and then i will share with my new workspace and click on share here and it will say collection shared successfully now in case you are having a team workspace let me very quickly create a team workspace i will say my team workspace and make it a team workspace and create the workspace now here when you create a team workspace you can add your teams by giving the name or the url or the emails of your team uh, for now i'll just cancel this and now i will go back to my earlier workspace that is a personal workspace and here if i now share my collection i will again go to this arrow and click share and this time if i select with a team workspace and say share and continue you can see here we have got option to manage the roles you can select who can be the editor who can only view the collections and all these roles you can manage from here then if you go to embed here you can get a code that you can embed into your website or anywhere and you will get a run in postman button and then you can also embed your collections into your api documentation then we have a get public link so if i get a public link this is a public link of my collection and now i can access this collection from anywhere using this public link this will also be handy when we want to run our collections remotely so i will show you that later so this is a public link also make sure that you take care when sharing this link because this is public and anyone can access the collection using this link so these are the options how you can share your collections and if you go again to this arrow and say view in web it will open your browser and go to your account your postman account and here it will show you your collection and all the details and then here again we have a share button i can go here and again i can share to the workspace from here if you want to share outside postman then you can click on these three dots and here we have a option to export the collection so you can see we have a option of export if you click here it can be exported as a json file and then you can share your collections outside the postman as well if you are working in teams you can manage roles we have a option to manage roles here and then you can select who can be an editor and who can be a viewer in your team for your collection if you go to any of your requests inside your collection you will find a option of comments so you can go and comment to a request from here and in case you want to comment on a collection you can view it on web and then it will open the browser and here you will have a option of 
comments so if i open this and you can see there is a comments option here i can go here and add a comment you can also say add to mention some person and then you can do the comments for your collections now to manage collections suppose there are so many collections available on your sidebar and you are working with some particular collection which is available at the bottom or somewhere in between which is not very comfortable to work with and you want to keep your collections or make your collection come up so you can just go to your collection and click on this star so that you can make this favorite and now it has come to the top and now it will become easy for you to work on this collection we also have a option of filter here and you can just filter your collections by typing anything and it will show you the matching collections here and if you want to delete your collection you can just go here to the three dots and we have a option here to delete so you can delete or remove from workspace if i go to delete it will delete the collection and then you will see there is a trash link here so if you go to trash it will take you to the website and here it will show you your deleted collections and then there will be an option to restore the collection and this will only be available for one day for a free account so if you have a free account the option to recover is only available for one day and in case you have a team account it is available for 30 days and if you have a business or an enterprise account it is available for 90 days as of the time of recording this video so make sure if you are deleting the collections you can recover it from here and then you can restore it from here so this was all about collections in postman and i believe now you have complete understanding of collections let us go to variables now variables are data store or elements that you can use to store different values and you can do that so that you can reuse the values at multiple and different locations also using variables is very important and very useful so that whenever there is a change in any value you do not have to go to different places and make the changes you can make the changes at a single place and that will make your work faster and efficient now in postman there are different levels where you can create variables so you can create variables at global level and i will show you how to do that then you can do at collection level environment level data level and then local level so if i go to my postman and let us say if i go to any collection and go to edit you will see here we have a option for variables so this is at a collection level and then i can also create at environment level and local level and then data level so for example i will say here or let's just say i go to this request i go to get list users and here let's just say this part of the request i want to refer from a variable so i can go to my collection and go to edit and go to variables and i will say this is base url and now here i will give the value and here i will give the value now you will see here we have initial value and then we have current value so whatever you provide in the current value that will be used for your execution on your system and the reason we have these two sections or these two columns is because sometimes we are using some secret or information or something that we do not want to share with our team so you can always put that value in the current value section for example if you are using some passwords or tokens and you do not want to share with the team you can put them here and then use it for executions on your system and then when you want to share it or when you are okay that you can you know share that information you can go here and you will find a three dots here and you can say persist so just take care when i click on persist it will also update the initial value and you can see now the current value is copied to the initial value and this value will go to the team whenever you share your collection and sometimes if you want to reset i will say reset you can go here and say reset or re reset all or re persist all so that it will go back for example let us say now i do not have a current value and if i say reset all you can see the initial value is copied to the current value and now this value will not go to the 
team whenever you share your collection only this value will go so you can have same values at both the places and you can keep the initial value blank if you do not want to store any value here and you do not want to share the values so i will click on update and now if i have to refer the variable here i can just say double curly brackets and i will give the variable name and now you can see it is being referred also if i hover over this it shows me it is coming from the collection variable so i can save and send and check and you can see i'm getting the response that means this is working fine now this was at a collection level you can also create variables at global level if you click on this icon environment lookup you can see here we have environment variables and then global variables you can directly go from here or you can click on this icon this is a new environment icon here again we have a option of globals you can create a variable here for example i say name and i can give some value here and save and when i i will close this when i click on this i icon here for environment quick look it will show me the global variables added and then we have environment variables so if you create any environment let me add an environment here I will say QA I will show you in some time why do we need environments and if I give some value here and say add and I will close this now you can see if I select an environment so if I click on this icon without selecting an environment you can see I am not getting any values or variables of the environment for that I will have to select the environment from here I will select the QA environment and now when I click on this I icon I am getting the variables of that environment so you can create at an environment level then at a data level as well so what do we mean by data level whenever you run your collections so if I click on run we have a option to select a data file so here you can select a data file and any variables that are coming from a data file are called data variables so these are at the data level then we have local level and local level means if you create any variable in the scripts for example we have pre-request scripts and test scripts if i create any variable here and the syntax is i will show you this later syntax is pm dot variables dot set and i can set a variable for example i can say name is albert so this variable name Albert is set at a local level which is local to this particular request and this particular script and the scope is only within this the execution of this script and these are called as local variables. Now whenever you refer the variables like I have referred a variable here it is referred as per the priority or the precedence in case we have the same variable name at different locations. For example if you have the same variable name base url at a collection level and then at a global level then the value from the collection level will be referred and let me also show you the precedence or i can say priority so we have local at the top then we have data then we have environment then we have collection and then we have global so for example if you have the same variable name at a collection level and the same variable name at a global level when you refer the variable the value from the collection level will get referred similarly if you have at a local level the same name then it will be referred from the local level so this is the precedence or the priority and you can uh, refer variables at all these places you can refer in a request or script or collection or environment so these are the places where you can refer the variables so we have seen how to create and refer variables let us see how we can get and set variables from scripts now in postman you can see we can create script we have a pre-request script section and then we have a test script section and these are available at different locations if i go to a collection and go to edit you can find we have this pre-request script section here and test script section here also if you have a folder inside your collection let me quickly create a new folder i will say add folder and give it some name say create and if i go to this folder and go to edit again you can see these two sections here so for now i am just going to delete this folder 
and here whatever you add in the pre-request script will get executed before running the request and whatever you add in the tests will get executed after you have run your request and after you have got the response we also have these snippets here like this snippet i added earlier when i clicked on status code is 200 this particular snippet so you can add your tests here now in postman you can create scripts in javascript for example i can say here console.log and if you want to change the font you can go to settings from here and go to settings and here in the user interface you can change the font from here so i can say console.log and if i want to print anything i can say hello world and now i can run this so this will get printed and to check i can go to the console postman console you can go to view and go to show postman console or in the status bar we have a icon here to show the postman console and this is the console and i will clear all the earlier logs and i will also split my screen so that you can see both the windows postman and postman console if i now send this request you can see it is printing hello world so this is how you can use scripts and all this is javascript here in case you are completely new to javascript you can go to my website that is automationstepbystep.com and here under the programming section you will find a tutorial on javascript so you can go here this will take you to a youtube playlist and you can learn javascript from here so here now for variables for getting and setting variables we have different levels so we can do at a collection level we can do at global level or we can get or set collections at environment level or also at local level so if you have to set a variable at a collection level you will say pm pm is an acronym for postman and then i will say collection variables i can say dot set and then the variable name for example i will say name is the variable name and the value i will say i will give some value here and save and send and if i now go to my collection and go to edit and go to variables you can see it has set this variable name here delete this one and in case i run it with a different name then it will just update the same variable if i do send now and if i go to my collection and check you can see the same variable is now updated with a different value if i have to get a variable from collection level i can do the same thing this will be the same and then i will say get and i just have to give the name of the variable now here i can either store it into a variable i will say let us say name equals this and here you can also use where where is the modern way of defining variables in javascript and i will also give semicolon here and then i can say console.log and i will say here i can just say name or i can also append something here i will say value of name is and i will give a plus for concatenation and i will save and run and if i go to the console log you can see here let me clear this and i will show you now if i run this here i am getting value of name is john so you can do like this to get and set variables at a collection level then if you have any variable at a global level or you want to set a variable at a global level you can say pm dot globals dot set and i will say name so i'm using the same variable name and i will say the value is henry and to get i will say pm dot globals dot get and i will say name and i can directly print it using console.log statement 
I'll say console dot log and this I will put in a brackets like this so I will save this and I will go to the console postman console clear it and I will click on send and you can see it is printing the value here if I go to my globals now you can see here a variable is created and the value is Henry so this was at a global level if you want to get or set any variables at an environment level then you can say here pm dot environment dot set I will say name is Graham and to get I will say pm dot environment dot get and the variable and I will print it on console I will say console dot log now here when you are using environment when you are getting or setting environment variables make sure the particular environment is selected here if this is not selected this will not work so it will only get and set variables from the environment which is selected from this drop down so in my case it is QA environment I will again run this I will click on I will save and send it is getting the value from the environment variable also when I go and check my environment variables on QA environment you can see this name is added or updated here now coming to the local variables the syntax here is pm dot variable variables dot set and I can set a variable here and to get a variable I will say pm dot variables dot get and I can give the variable name now here one thing to notice when I say pm dot variables dot get and the variable name this will work at all the levels and it will get the value of the variable based on the priority for example if we have the variable the variable with same name at different locations then this statement pm dot variables dot get will get the variable as per the priority or the precedence that we have seen here so for now local is the highest priority or the precedence I will save and uh, let me also say console.log so that it prints on the console and then I will clear the logs and send it save and send and here I am getting Einstein so this is how you get and set variables in postman from the scripts so let us now also learn about environments now environments in postman is a set of key value pairs let me go back to my postman and let's just say I will go to any API request and let's just say in our API we want to run our requests on multiple environments so suppose we have a QA environment we have a regression environment we have a sandbox environment we have a production environment now the basic structure of the request remains same but there are some values that change for example the endpoint urls can change the username passwords and other secrets or environment dependent parameters may change so whenever you want to run on different environments you do not have to go manually and change all these values for every environment you can create variables for all these values that will change with environment and you can go to your environment you can click here on this manage environment icon and from here you can create environment you can just add an environment for example I have already added Q environment and here you can add your variables for example you can say your endpoint will be something here let us say example forward QA dot in and let us say they will be a username and let us say they will be a password and you can update now the same values you have to use at a different environment also so you can just go here and click on this duplicate environment and I have got this here I will click here and let us say this will be regression environment and I can give values as per the regression environment here and then update it and similarly I will again copy this duplicate this and let us say this is our sandbox environment and again I will give the values as per our sandbox environment here and now all these environments will be available here 
on this drop down so if i go to this drop down you can see all this environment values are here so of course you will be referring the values in your scripts and in your requests for example here i will be referring the endpoint and you can see here this is and you can see this is an environment variable and you can also see the current value if i change so if i run this now it will get the value from the QA environment if I change the environment from here and run the same request it will get this its value from the regression environment so this is how you can create environments and refer values also if you go here if you select your environment from here and click on this view environment or environment quick look it will show you the variables and values set for that particular environment you can also click on manage environment and you can share your environment from here so you can share your environments within workspaces you can download your environment as a json file and you can also share it it will be very handy when you are running your requests from command line and then you can delete your environment or remove from workspace so this is how you can manage your environments in postman so this was all in this part of Postman Crash Course. I hope all this was very useful for you. Do share your knowledge with others and I will meet you in the next part of Postman. Thank you for watching.